Hello, welcome to JDC Diabetes Gems video. This month, I am summarizing my lecture which I delivered at the National Insulin Summit. Newer strategies for the treatment of diabetes. Hopefully, this topic will be helpful to both professionals and patients. This is a picture of iPhone for us and recently iPhone 5 exploded onto the global market. Bigger, much faster, yet 25% lighter and 18% thinner than the previous generation. Somewhat a different explosion is happening in the field of diabetes and we will be discussing the following topics briefly. This is how an insulin pump functions. The insulin is stored inside the reservoir in the pump and the insulin which is the rapid acting insulin is gradually but continuously infused subcutaneously. That is the continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion. The doctors as well as the patients on insulin should have an idea on when to initiate a patient on insulin pump and when not to. Probably the contraindications are also equally important and for the clinical judgment and for legal reasons we recently published the suggested guidelines for Indian patients based on experience and on cultural differences. The guidelines also consists of some of the pictures of patients using insulin pump in India, customized to the Indian dressing styles, how they are discreetly positioning the insulin pump. This is a free full text article available in the internet. The gross indications will be uncontrolled diabetes, despite multiple daily insulin, insulin resistance and then anybody who is on insulin, whether they are on insulin from insulin syringes or with insulin pens, those who are seeking a better quality of life can opt for insulin pump therapy because of flexibility with the meals, with the exercise and there is a dramatic improvement in the symptoms of neuropathy when a patient is switching on to insulin pump therapy and meticulously and intelligently using it. They should be motivated to learn about the insulin pump and use it properly. And there is an improvement in erectile dysfunction and we have already a couple of years when published original research on it. And now we have an ongoing study as seen in this uh, US government website. We are conducting a clinical trial on uh, improvement in the erectile dysfunction in type 2 diabetes subjects. <clears throat> and other indications will be coronary artery disease and then those who are having chronic kidney disease where the requirement of insulin goes on changes. Then frequent travelers, uh, they can uh, switch from one basal to the other when they are crossing the time zones. So the insulin pumps uh, are useful not only in uncontrolled diabetes but it can be brittle diabetes and especially when there are frequent episodes of low sugar or hypoglycemia. They are scared of hypoglycemia. You can have a different basal for the day, different basal for the night and uh, you can have a guidance from continuous glucose monitoring. Continuous glucose monitoring is not connected with insulin pump therapy. Continuous glucose monitoring is one step further with use of glucometers. Glucometer will tell you the blood sugar which is measured at that point of time. Whereas continuous glucose monitoring will tell you the blood glucose continuously. In a period of 24 hours you will have 280 readings and this is the latest gadget available in India, the iPro2 which has got an end light sensor which is a very very accurate and sensitive sensor and which will provide you with 
288 readings in 24 hours and you can use this practically for as long as 7 to 8 days continuously and in this picture in this recording you can see the CGM of a person who is on insulin with unrecognized nocturnal hypoglycemia. The patient is not aware of low sugar at night but early in the morning at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock the blood sugars are dropping even below 40 milligram percentage and this is a very common cause of ventricular arrhythmias and death in diabetes patients. So the CGM will tell you the blood sugars whether it is low or high or normal, the duration of hyperglycemia, the amplitude of glycemic excursions and so many details on how you control your diabetes. This can be useful not only in diabetes but even in pre-diabetes where you are going to prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes. And uh, recently in India there is a new pump which is available that is the VO insulin pump which will shut off by itself via a low glucose suspend mechanism. And uh, this is a real breakthrough in the use of insulin pump therapy. And these are the new sensors and the continuous glucose monitoring equipments which will be soon available in India, the Dexcom G4 Platinum. And this sensor is a new generation sensor that is a generation 4 sensor needle, a very sleek, elegant, with a brilliant design. Dexcom has partnered with Roche for marketing this product in India. This pump is already available in the global market, the Omnipore, with no strings or tubes attached. And this is a solo insulin pump that is a new micro pump, which otherwise is a patch pump, which is smaller than the currently available Omnipore, which can be attached to the surface of the body, and which has got a, a remote, as you can see here, which will help the patient uh, control the basal, the bolus and make adjustments. So the treatment of diabetes is becoming more convenient, more comfortable. This is a cell nova mobile patch pump. It has got a built-in glucose monitor in it. And this is the uh, thinnest pump available, the T-slim insulin pump. The USB connectivity is available which will connect to the web. Uh, and will uh, get connected to a software for diabetes management. This is a pearl insulin pump, perhaps the only insulin pump where the patient need not fill the pump with insulin. You can have the pre-filled cartridges with the insulin put inside the pump. So it becomes more convenient. Which insulin can you use? You can use any rapid acting insulin, Lispro or uh, Glargin or Glulysin. But studies have shown that Aspart is superior to other insulins for use in the insulin pump for obvious reasons. As you can see here, uh, with the lowest rates of pump occlusion and the pumps as you know will vibrate, you can put in the vibrate mode and Aspart is one insulin which probably doesn't change its potency uh, with minimal changes in temperature or with even physical situations like vibration. What is new with the glucometers? So many newer technologies are going to come up with the use of glucometers and this is probably the smallest glucometer and this is the first ever medi medical device that plugs directly into the iPhone or the iPod touch. And as you can see here in this tiny video, uh, this glucometer uh, will function like the usual glucometer but within seconds the display will appear in the iPhone screen and you can generate graph and you can email directly to the doctor's office and it will also help with other functions like the bolus is our carb uh, calculation etc. And this is another recent publication from our institution on the cost effective use of telemedicine combined with self monitoring of blood glucose in the treatment of type 2 diabetes and this is a data of 1000 patients, all of them eligible for an A1C lowering of below 6.5. The beauty of using telemedicine and technology is not only really with achieving A1C targets, but here the A1C targets, whether the 6.5 or 7 or whatever it may be, are achieved without the usual risk of hypo. Hypoglycemia is considered the major barrier to the 
successful implementation of diabetes therapy. And this is, this is a new concept. It is undergoing preclinical trials with smart insulin. The smart insulin, uh, as you can see, has a polymer conjugate nanostructure designed to swell, burst apart and in response to a particular blood glucose saturation and insulin is released. So it functions almost like an automatic mechanism. And these are smart insulin, it's another new concept. And if this works, it will be a potential blockbuster. However, uh, it is a rather risky concept because it works on an unproven technology. So we have to wait and see whether these smart insulins are really smart. Another new technology, the in-smart insulin delivery concept. This is an implantable in a medical device and this again responds to like a closed loop, the increase or decrease in the patient's blood glucose levels, mimicking the action of a healthy pancreas. This has no connection with insulin pump therapy, but it works on a, uh, another permeable, uh, gel barrier technology. And it responds to fluctuations in the blood glucose value. The use of an automatic portable glucose control system for overnight glucose control. This is another uh, new concept, the artificial pancreas. And this uh, appeared in the current issue of diabetes care, the PGCS, where they have uh, used a smartphone and then the insulin pump and the mini link transmitter of the uh, NLIG sensors were actually modified to transmit the data every one minute rather than every five minutes. And uh, this is uh, the simple uh, structure of uh, this uh, automated portable closed loop system with a VO insulin pump and uh, the Bluetooth and they have actually uh, have all these algorithms in a Blackberry stock and an external monitoring system and here you see the uh, sensors. And eight type 1 diabetes subjects were enrolled for this clinical trial. And if you go through the data, the blood sugars were between 100, between uh, 70 and 140 roughly. 80 to 90 percent of the time when the patients were on closed loop when compared to open loop. And one barrier probably is with the control of post-meal spikes in type 1 diabetes. And uh, at large, they could control the onset of hypoglycemia. So the closed loop system of the artificial pancreas is going to uh, come up the uh, next revolution, probably the next revolution in diabetes therapy. Here again the barrier, the post-meal spikes and we need to have another insulin. The currently available rapid acting insulins may not be that rapid acting in controlling the post-meal spikes. In India we used to tell our patients that some of them who doesn't have a control post-meal, we tell them to have the rapid acting insulins not 10 or 15 minutes before the meal but 30 minutes before the meal. But still. There are 5 to 10 percent of patients who doesn't respond and we probably will have soon another insulin, the, the Viaget insulin. As you can see here is a rapid acting form of human insulin undergoing clinical trials. And this causes the insulin hexamers to dissociate and prevents the reassociation of hexamers. And this is achieved by the addition of EDTA and citric acid. And when compared to currently available Lispro, the first phase of insulin secretion is actually retained with the use of Viaget. So Viaget is uh, a promise. As a rapid acting insulin, probably it could be much much superior to the currently available rapid acting insulin. Another promising research is with the addition of higher uranides. It can be added to the rapid acting analog again to control the so-called uncontrolled post-meal spikes. So what are the innovation opportunities going clockwise from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? Ultimately we are looking for a fully automated multi-hormone closed loop. Why multi-hormone? So we require one more insulin. There is one more insulin or one more hormone 
not insulin. There is one more hormone which is secreted by the pancreatic beta cells and that is pralentide. It is co-secreted along with the insulin and in insulin pumps it is used separately. At present, uh, insulin should not be mixed with pralentide. It is separately available, separately injected or separately infused. Again, to control the post immune spikes in uh, diabetes. Currently, we were successful in public, uh, publishing the vaccination guidelines for diabetes. All the international scientific agencies, scientific associations are having vaccination strategies in diabetes patients. And uh, this is again a full text article. Uh, the free text is available at the Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism. And you can probably go through the recommended vaccines for diabetes patients in India. Pneumococcal vaccination, influenza vaccination, the occurrence of pneumococcal infections and influenza infections are uh, much higher. In diabetes patients, especially in uncontrolled diabetes when compared to the general population. And eligibility of the vaccination is not only in those uh, with diabetes and with age more than 60 or 65 years, even in children with diabetes, vaccination is recommended, especially with pneumococcal vaccine and with influenza vaccine. Influenza vaccine need to be repeated every year. Every year we will have a new vaccine and this is a seasonal vaccine. What is what was the fate of the inhaled insulin? Are inhaled insulin still there or not? We were also part of clinical trials with inhaled insulin and almost all the pharmaceutical companies have stopped the clinical trials with inhaled insulin. But one uh, company that is a mankind, ma mankind is still continuing with the clinical trials with inhaled insulin and that is the Afrisa. It is a ultra rapid acting meal time inhaled insulin therapy and it incorporates the uh, powder technology. And this is a spring universal infusion set for use in insulin pump therapy, especially in children. It will fit onto any insulin pump and it has an automatic lightning fast insertion technique. As you can see here, uh, it is very light, very convenient and the needle insertion, the cannula insertion is automatic. And when there is a pump occlusion also, this can sense and let the patient know. So a lot of new things are happening in technology. However, the ultimate success in the treatment of diabetes is with having a fully committed team work with you. Technology may fail. And thank you very much for listening and viewing the GEMS video. We'll be there next month with a new topic. Until then, goodbye from Jodhidev's Diabetes Research Centers in Kerala. Thank you very much.